What's up, biology students? Mr. Holloway here. Today's video is about that other nucleic acid, the one we haven't really talked about yet. Today, we're going to talk about ribonucleic acid, or RNA. Our genetic material, our DNA, is found in the nucleus of our cells and is organized into these structures called chromosomes. Every cell in our body contains the same set of chromosomes, and these chromosomes contain genes, or sequences of DNA, that instruct our cells how to synthesize protein molecules. The nucleus of our cell protects this genetic plan, and our DNA never leaves the nucleus unless the nucleus is in the process of dividing by mitosis or meiosis. The proteins coded for in our DNA, however, are manufactured in the cytoplasm of the cell. So how does the information in our DNA get out of the nucleus? That's where RNA comes in. Like DNA, RNA is a nucleic acid, and in many ways it is very similar to DNA. But there are some notable and important differences as well. DNA, you might recall, is a double-stranded molecule. We say that these strands are anti-parallel because they run in opposite directions. Unlike DNA, RNA is a single-stranded molecule. But just like DNA, it is coiled into a helix, just a single helix instead of a double helix. Also just like DNA, RNA is comprised of an alternating sugar phosphate backbone with one of four nitrogenous bases attached to each sugar molecule and pointing into the middle of the helix. Both DNA and RNA contain the bases cytosine, guanine, and adenine. But whereas DNA contains the base thymine, RNA contains the base uracil. Most of the same base pairing rules that apply to DNA also apply to RNA. C still bonds with G, and if we're talking DNA, A still bonds to T. But if we're talking about RNA, then U, or uracil, bonds with A. U simply replaces T as the nitrogenous base in RNA, and functions pretty much just as T would. But you only find U in RNA, and you'll only find T in DNA. Most significantly, RNA bases can form hydrogen bonds to DNA bases following these rules. In this figure, we can see another structural difference between DNA and RNA. All nucleotides, both DNA nucleotides and RNA nucleotides, are made of a phosphate group, a nitrogenous base, and a 5-carbon sugar. When these nucleotides link up to form a chain, the phosphate group of one nucleotide bonds to the 5-carbon sugar of the next nucleotide. In DNA, this 5-carbon sugar is a molecule called deoxyribose, which is the D in DNA. In RNA, the sugar is a molecule called ribose, which is the R in RNA. It is a small but significant structural difference, having to do with this part of the sugar molecule here. Deoxy means lacking oxygen, and you can see here that the deoxyribose molecule lacks an oxygen atom in this location, whereas the ribose molecule contains an oxygen atom in this same location. In this figure, we can also see the two anti-parallel strands that make up DNA. The terms 5' prime and 3' prime are used to identify each end of the strand of DNA, and we can see here that while one strand of DNA is running downward from 5' prime to 3', prime, the other strand is running upward from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. These same terms are also used to help identify the ends of an RNA molecule as well, but remember, RNA is usually single-stranded, as we can see here. There are three important forms of RNA that coordinate in the construction of proteins inside the cell. The first of these is called messenger RNA, abbreviated mRNA. It's called messenger RNA because this form of RNA carries the DNA code out of the nucleus where it can be interpreted by the cell's machinery. Essentially, mRNA carries a genetic message out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. mRNA is a long, coiled, single strand of RNA. In mRNA, every set of three bases is called a codon, because each of these sets of three codes for one specific amino acid in the protein the cell will build. But we'll learn all about that process in the next video. Ribosomes are often referred to as the construction workers of the cell, because these molecules are responsible for building proteins. Ribosomes themselves are made largely of RNA, a kind of highly structured RNA called ribosomal RNA, which is abbreviated rRNA. Ribosomes are found floating freely in the cytoplasm, but when constructing a protein, they attach themselves to the endoplasmic reticulum just outside the nucleus. 
Each ribosome is made of two parts, or subunits, not so creatively called the large subunit and the small subunit, which fit together in a way sort of resembling a hamburger bun. The third kind of RNA is called transfer, or tRNA. These are small folded coils of RNA, and they are called transfer RNAs because they carry or transfer amino acids, which are to be part of the protein molecule being assembled by the cell. Remember how our strand of messenger, or mRNA, had these sets of three bases called a codon? Well, tRNA molecules contain this region called an anticodon, which is also a set of three bases. Anticodons and codons match up according to the rules of base pairing, and this is how transfer, or tRNAs, are able to add amino acids to a protein in the correct order. Again, we'll learn about that process in our next video. So those are the three forms of RNA. Messenger, or mRNA, which carries instructions for building proteins from the nucleus to ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Ribosomal, or rRNA, which forms an important part of both the small and large subunits of a ribosome. And transfer, or tRNA, which carries amino acids to the ribosome and matches them to the correct codon in the mRNA strand. Although their overall shapes are different, each of these forms of RNA is made of the same basic stuff, chains of nucleotides, each nucleotide made of a phosphate group, a 5-carbon sugar called ribose, and one of four nitrogenous bases, either cytosine, guanine, adenine, or uracil. All three types of RNA come together during the construction of protein molecules inside the cell. And because the original strand of DNA that codes for these proteins remains protected in the nucleus, the cell always has a set of master plans to use first in the synthesis of RNA, then in the synthesis of a protein. This idea that DNA codes for RNA and RNA codes for proteins is the central dogma of molecular biology that we talked about in our first video on genetics and is an essential framework for understanding how life functions at the cellular level. It's all right here in this computer-generated graphic, actually, and if you do not already, you will soon recognize all the parts and processes that are being depicted to us here in this striking image. And with that, I will bring our video to a close. Thanks for watching, and feel free to go back and watch this video as many times as you need until you feel like you understand the structure of RNA and how it is both similar to and different from DNA.